Hi, my name is Yulon Lin and I'm a developer advocate for Data Studio. Today, I'm going to be talking about best practices for keeping track of how your community visualization is being used as a chart filter. To do that, let's first take a look at how first party charts in Data Studio do it. And so if I have this pie chart here that's acting as a chart filter, if I click on it, all right, I can see which slice of the pie is being used as a filter because there's some sort of visual cue. In this case, the filter slice that I've selected is brighter and the opacity has changed on the rest of the chart. So when I write a community visualization, I also want to be able to reflect visually how it's being used as a chart filter. So I click on a bar, click on another bar, and I can see that there's this red highlight, this red outline to tell me which dimensions are being used as a filter. It's great if I can keep track of the user clicks and all, but there are other ways that a filter is cleared. For example, there's a reset action button, or if I have it working as a filter and I go from view into edit mode, the filter clears. So in order to keep track of that, Data Studio actually passes you the value that's currently being used as an interaction. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means, but first, Let's remind ourselves what the data you send to Data Studio in order to apply a filter looks like. You have this interaction data object. You have concepts. You have this field ID, which is the dimension ID that you want to filter on, and values, which are the dimension values that you care about. And then Data Studio sends data back about this applied filter. Right? And so in this case, this interaction value object, which comes from the data.interactions.interaction.id.value object, you don't have to remember all of that, it's in the documentation, comes back and it tells you type is filter. So that's the user has selected, I wanna use this as a chart filter. And here the data is kind of concepts, here's this concept ID or dimension ID and the values is an array of arrays of selected value. In other words, it's actually a mirror of the thing that you send to Data Studio in order to apply a filter. And so for example, if you have a bar chart acting as a single value filter, so I'm saying dimension ID and I'm going to send the value Spanish. This is the data you sent to Data Studio saying like, I want to filter on dimension ID equals Spanish. Data Studio is going to send back an acknowledgement saying, I've applied this filter on dimension ID equals Spanish. How about when a visualization is no longer acting as a filter? For example, if I've acted as a filter and now I'm clicking on the reset action, how does my chart know when to take the red highlights off? The value it sends back will still have the type filter, but the data will be undefined. So you should be checking kind of this interaction value object for the data and whether or not it's undefined. So for example, I would have some code that writes, you know, if interaction value dot data is undefined, I'm going to clear the outline because I know it's no longer acting as a filter of other things on my dashboard. Else, if it's not undefined, then it's currently acting as a filter and I want to outline certain bars and the data for which bars I should be highlighting is going to be in this dot data object. And so this is how I actually write my own code. So in summary, I've kind of given you a quick overview of this interaction value object and how you can use it to keep track of whether or not and how your visualization is acting as a filter for other components on your dashboard. This will help you to add functionality to your community visualizations and also have a more helpful UI. So you should go to developers.google.com slash data studio slash visualization, share it on social media using the hashtag data studio devs or submit to our showcase.